Right, EVCE, and introduction to EVCE gives you the option for your actual key fob. So this is, an, is a digital key connection. So we have a ignition, a start stop switch, and we need a fob to activate the, sti the, the station. Two and a half inch display is the minimum requirement so that you can do calibration. This is a seven inch display without the fancy cover over it. Um, I've swapped this out a couple times. I've also added for training, it won't really be relative in this, is an AK converter over an AKI analog key interface and another key switch so I can teach both in the same mode. Now, side mount control. I have a side mount control over here and this would be for water sports as well as a single application. And this is an EVC control, so there's a node behind this that's part of this. Again, the same idea of installation as a standard um, top mount control is there's three screws, there's a cutout, you just basically cut it out on the side of the hull, you put your insert in, you screw the insert in or bolt it in, you slide this in place, there's three screws, screw it in, put your plastic cover on here, you're done. It has an emergency lanyard already factored into it, all right? So the emergency lanyard is something you definitely don't want to lose. So that's factored right into the side mount control. Your power trim switches here. Your options for trim assist. That's power trim assist. The drive can move at set predetermined points. Cruise control, which basically is, um, you know, you don't want to move the lever. You push this button once and it will increase the RPM, 50 RPM. Tow mode for tow sports. That maintains the speed of the vessel. And then upper minus, you can increase or decrease the tow mode speed. All right, so side mount's a little different, and the neutral button is right here. It may be a little hard for you to see, but it's right here on the side of the control. So this is how you do calibration and auto configuration for a side mount. So you would turn the key on, shift levers in neutral, push and hold the neutral button for six seconds, let it go, push it again, six seconds, or until you hear a beep and the displays go blank, and that's auto configuration. So again, the shift points, if you're calibrating the control is neutral, six seconds, put it in calibration mode, full detent, neutral button, and so on. You understand that. There's also a friction screw on it, so you can actually increase or decrease the friction of it, just like a regular remote control behind the plastic. So it's pretty straightforward. Next I want to go over is the E-key. All right, EVC E-key. Welcome to the key fob system. So. To use this, I'm going to turn the battery switch on. And then what I need to do is I need to activate the system. Now, if the key fob was not locked, then I could have just walked up to this boat, turned the key on, and then start it and drive it away. So to lock it, I'm going to shut the ignition off. I'm going to take one of my key fobs, and it's a passive fob, so remember, it's just a standard passive fob, and you bring it up close to it, and if it turns red and starts to beep, then that means the system's locked, so now I can't activate it. So far, it's just locked out at this point. If I shut the battery switch off, I have sent a lock command with this key fob to the PCU. You cannot unlock it without a key fob or Vodia. So, Let's go through setting of the key fobs and what you want to might want to do with this. Again, some of this you don't want to share with general public sometimes. It's not a good idea. So um, let's go ahead and unlock the system. There we go. Now it's going to turn a key on automatically, so I can shut that off if I want to. And the display will light up and so forth. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you see the uh, two and a half inch display, which is the one I really want to use here. So if I get to the back arrow button, I don't see anything. I can click OK, or I can arrow back, I can arrow to the right. So in this two and a half inch display, the back arrow button doesn't bring you to that four inch display where you have your menu options. That's all the way to the right in the two and a half inch display. So when I get all the way to the right, I get to settings. All right, and that's as far as it goes. If I click OK, here we go. Now we're into the settings option, like the four inch display was hit the back arrow button. So poke around. You can't break anything by poking around with your fingers. So I'm gonna arrow over, drive type, I don't care, toe angle, neutral beep, 
info beep, which is your alarm, e-key management. Now I highlight the e-key management. I'm gonna click okay. Show key authorization. So I need an e-key that has authorized it. And now we're in e-key management. It did take that time. So in e-key management, it says add a key. What I wanna do is I'm gonna delete the keys. Let's say the owner lost his two keys. So if I'm lucky as a dealer, I have added a master key, which has the white dot on it. So that's my master key over here. I have his two keys, which he has magically lost. So what I need to do is I need to delete his key. Now what I wanna do, first thing I wanna do is identify my key. So I'm going to go there, click OK, and show my key. And my key is number three. So I know I can delete uh, keys number one, two, and four, but I have to keep three. So I'm going to back up to delete E key, click OK, and then delete E key, and which one's highlighted is E key one, click OK. Confirm it, E key is deleted. Wait for it. Now E key two, I can delete. So you notice E key one is gone, so now it's highlighted, so I can click OK and confirm. E key not deleted. I want to go back up to E key 2, not E key 3. Click OK. Click OK. It won't let me delete E key 2 for some reason. So if that's the case, it wants uh, the key number 1. And this is where you just got to remember, think outside the box. All right, I've already deleted one of the keys. Now I have two brand new keys that I just took out of service and I'm gonna sell the guy, so I've got these two keys. I'm gonna take the first key, key number 10 here, and I'm going to add that and that's gonna become E key number one. So I'm gonna back up, back up, okay? Sorry, back arrow button. And I wanna back up until I see add E key. Click okay, show E key to add. So I've added key number 10 and let's see which key is key number 10 so we're going to arrow over until we see identify e key click ok and i'm going to take his new key and his key is number one and that's how this works if you delete number one it wants number one back so you have to give him number one now because he does not have his other key i have a second key here key number 11 that i want to give him so i'm going to back up again just poke around again e key management click ok i need a key to show him now i can use his number one key and that one works and i'm going to delete his key number two so click delete e key number two is highlighted in the middle click ok confirm e key deleted now I have key number one and key number three. So I have my key is three, that's the master key. He has key number one, and I need to back up to add his key. So I'm gonna add his key, which is key 11. So when I put that over to the key fob, it adds it, and I'm good to go. So that's how you can add and subtract keys if you have a master key. If you lose all the keys, you need Vodia.